Sagittarius why are you so mysterious baby what is going on my dears it is Mira it is Shira it is Vera it is Scorpion Red several I am back at it again one time for the one time shout out to all my OG shout out to all my newbies shout out to all my babies for liking sharing subscribing and clicking this video if there's anyone that would like to book a personal or private reading or if any of these videos resonate and you want to send some love and generosity over to the page and you know show some support go ahead and check out the description box of this video or check out the about tab on my YouTube page which gives my pricing list the various forms of ways that you can support um, the best way to reach out to me for booking or if you just want to send me a private message is to send me a message on Instagram if you don't have Instagram just shoot me a message on scorpionreds at gmail.com just shoot me an email okay and I'll help you get all situated uh, Sagittarius, you already know how we always do. Before we get into any readings, we always give acknowledgement, praise, and thanks uh, to Father God, the universe, the creator, whatever it is that you want to call him. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, bow your head with me or raise your hands, whatever it is that you need to do. We just need the Lord to come on through. So, Father God, thank you so much for bringing us here for the sign of Sagittarius. Thank you so much for giving us a warm plate of some beautiful, just delicious food and a in a safe place to lay our head at, Father God, and, you know, just good family and friends to surround us, to keep us happy and whole, Father God. We're just thankful for just the simple things that we have every day, Father God. We just know that there is so much more coming into our life, and we're just delighted, and we are strong, we're determined. You know, we got that willpower to continue to fight, Father God. Uh allow us to continue to keep our stride and keep our head up father god and just to be gracious for where we stand at and just and just appreciate you know every single thing that's coming into our life father god so just uh give us the guidance that we need today in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen all right let's I don't know why I wanted to go over here first. Let's go over here first, Sagittarius. We have the tea leaf cards. All right, we're going to get into this. We're going to do three over here, three over there. So let's see what we got. Give me three cards for Sagittarius. What is this? Child, you got the dagger. <clears throat> Fears, worries, and a tense situation. You got the dagger. Okay. Let me go. Okay, you got the four leaf clover. You got good fortune and good luck. That's good. All right. So what's all these fears and worries and clarify for um Sagittarius? Then you got the kangaroo. Unsettled times need to plan ahead. Hmm. Unsettling times you need to plan ahead. And you see that this kangaroo has the child and so so it looks like there's some fears and worries about. Your luck and fortune right now. It seems like there's unsettling times. And like you just have a lot going on. You have a lot going on. There's a lot of fears and worries. There's a tense situation going on right now. Surrounding you and your kids. And it looks like you're just praying for some luck here. Looks like you're praying for some luck. Alright. So let's see what we got over here on this side Sagittarius. We got the wreath. Sorrow over a loss. Good gracious. Okay, sorrow over a loss. Let's see. It said it, it, it said that y'all just might have recently visited someone's burial site. Y'all might have just recently visited someone's burial site. It says pale. Time to get out of a situation. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's something going on. It's it's something going on, Sagittarius. And then you got the axe. Forks, forces working against you. So, I don't know. It, it seems to me, Sagittarius, like someone, like someone is about to cut you out. It seems like they're about to remove you. Because the axe is when somebody is chopping down something. You know what I'm saying? Make better use of, like, some wood, a tree. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's better in a fire. You know what I'm saying? It's better to warm us up. You know? So, I don't know. I feel like something is, it seems like, is about to... And, and again, with the, with the pale here, it's time to get out of a, a situation. I feel like you need to get out of a situation before they remove you. Sorrow over a loss. It definitely seems like something is about to be removed. 
I need some additional guidance here. Let's see what we got going on. And if y'all hear any noise and stuff in the background, I do have like uh, my kids and my nieces here and stuff. So y'all just, you know, ignore that. I honestly feel like you guys remember it says unsettling times. You need to plan ahead. You need to plan to remove yourself out of a situation before someone removes you. Like step out on your own. Don't have it says teaching and learning. So like you're going through some type of hardship right now because God is like um I don't know. I feel like you're going through something right now because God is teaching you something. It's going to be your testimony. It's like once you learn it this time, you never have to go through this again. Do you understand? So, and it's something that is going to be, and it's going to set an example for your children. You know what I'm saying? So your children don't have to go through this too. You know what I'm saying? Like, and healing. So teaching and learning and healing here. So it looks like. You're definitely mourning over something. I don't know if it's a death of a family member or a death of a relationship. Uh, you know, it's a death of something. Something has ended, but it's teaching you something. And you're learning so much more out of this situation. Then I really do think that the hurt that it's presenting you. I feel like you should heal from this situation. Once you heal from this situation and you make the decision to remove yourself from the situation, don't let nobody cut you out of anything. And don't allow too much stress and worry to come over you when you have the free will to do what you need to do. As long as you have planning and learning, you can do what you need to do to get yourself out of this situation. And y'all forgive me because I hear all of this noise going on in the background. I'm trying to focus what the fuck is going on in my mind and all the information, all the stuff going on out there. Lord. Y'all give me a second. Let me, let me, let me, give me a second. Hey, I need you guys to go downstairs. Y'all are in my recording. I need y'all to go downstairs. No, go downstairs. All right. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. All right. All right. So, Claire, mm, mm. we got the Nine of Cups, the Six of Swords, the Eight of Cups. So, what this is basically telling me, the Nine of Cups is, um, like, you're about to receive the wish fulfillment. You just got to move on. Like, honestly, you just got to make your mind up to move on. And stop letting your emotions fuck with you to end up, you know, feeling like you need to come back for something that you need to get over. Like, you need to walk away, move on, move on for good. No turning back. That's when you'll really feel free. That's when you'll really feel that happiness. That's when you will really feel that full satisfaction. When you walk away with no turning back. You know what I'm saying? Like to me, when you see when you see someone that knows what's best for them is to move on. Actually, like move. And it looks like. Spirit is having to uplift you out of this because I don't feel like you would have left on your own. It's like you're having to receive some assistance. It's like someone physically has to move you because it's like you you would just settled and just allowing things. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Because I'm just telling you what I see. It's like someone just settled and just allowing things to happen. When you see the Six of Swords, it's like a family member, a friend spiritual uplifting things like something happening where it forced you to make this major move like i don't feel the planning i don't feel the uh like you resting and relying on your own resources to make this happen it's like someone had to physically uproot you out of the situation because you wouldn't do it on your own like that's honestly what i'm getting that's honestly what I'm getting. It's like you will be so, you'll be okay by yourself. You just got to believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like I really don't feel like, 
it, I feel like you allow, you allow someone else to make the decision for you. And that's the reason why you keep playing back and forth with this thing of wanting to go back. Because I feel like it wasn't your decision. That's why I'm telling you up here. Listen. There's forces work, working against you. It doesn't care. Uh, like It doesn't care about what you want. God cares about what you need. You need. It's time to get out of this situation. On your own. On your own. You need to make the decision. Because. You're stuck over here in the sorrow for loss. If you do not wake up and start making decisions on your own and on your own recourse, they're going to do it for you. And it's not even going to be a situation where you could turn back to. I don't feel like you could turn back to it. You got to do it on your own. You have to make your mind up with that Six of Swords. Think about what's best for you with that Nine of Cups. Think about what's necessary. Think about, rely on your faith. You see the stars on her outfit? Rely on your faith. Think about what's best for you. You're a star. You understand? Think about your wishes. Think about your aspirations, your goals, and everything. Like, I mean, you got the judgment in a reverse. I don't like the judgment in a reverse over here with this. The judgment in a reverse. Oh, what's this? And then you got the five of pentacles. Okay. So the um mm, mm, mm. the judgment in reverse. I don't know if it's like they're telling me like you're not showing up to work. You're not showing up to perform your job to, you know, do your duties. It's like something where somebody is relying on you for something because the judgment is to me. It's like you answering to your calling, you know. You answering to your calling. You accepting the final outcome of a situation. The judgment in reverse is not good. You know, like you were not on the right side of justice. I don't know if it's because you would not pick up and move on your own. And remember, it's, and I don't know why I keep having to repeat this season about what God tell you to move. Move and don't turn back. Like if you turn back, you're going to turn into a fucking pillar of salt. And, and it's like. But you keep looking back. It's like, it, it was the struggle to remove yourself. It was like God had to do things that he didn't want to do to pull you out of it. And you're still looking back. Why? It, why? It's like God wants something so better for you. It's something about you being good on your own. And you need to be on your own for you to understand what God is trying to teach you. And what God wants you to learn and for you to process your healing. You got to understand that. It's like it's something about lack of judgment here. And you not really finding your true worth here with the uh, five of coins in the reverse. The five of coins. I mean, that's not even the five of coins in the reverse. That's the five of coins in the upright. The five of coins in the upright is someone that's like lacking of something. It's like your self-esteem ain't there. Um, in some type of mental into mental sickness or instability. You know, it's like you don't believe in yourself. You don't feel like you're beautiful. You don't feel like you're worthy. You don't feel like um. You're accountable enough for your own decisions or something. It's like you rely on other people to um, make you feel confident before you could go forward for shit that impacts your life. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's some situation of lack. A lack of foundation. And that's where the judgment in, a, in the reverse is coming. It's like you keep making bad decisions it's because somewhere deep inside there is... Some self-loathing or lack there. And with that eye in the middle. It's like look at yourself. Is it, And it literally said. It's like that's why you acting like that. You got to look at yourself. You got to look at yourself. You got to see what you're doing. And how it's creating. An instability for you. That's why. They, it's like that's why you're not stable. Someone has to, it's like you got to pull yourself together and you got to stop making 
choices that reflect your upbringing, uh, choices that reflect your self-integrity, your dignity, and that you want a better standard for your life. You can't say one thing, but you're doing another. You know what I'm saying? You can't act or pretend to be so strong, but when it comes for you to make the choice to remove yourself from something when God is trying to give you something better, it's like you're having to be pulled out of the gutter. And then you're still looking back at the gutter. It's like, no. This lack of judgment is because lack of self-worth. And that's just basically what it boils down to. It's just basically what it boils down to. Um, let's go right here. Give me guidance. Um, what's the uh, uh, outcome for this situation? Give me guidance on this clover. Because I definitely see that this person is trying to pray and for fortune and luck and everything but God is telling you unsettling times you need to plan ahead you need to look at yourself that's why the eye is there give me guidance I, I'm not taking this because I feel like this was already flipped over and I didn't even know it. let me shuffle again Give me guidance here for Sagittarius. All right, you got the, you got the fish, you got the fish, and then I want to say this is the lady. Twenty nine is that the lady or the gentleman? No, that's not. It's got to be the gentleman. Got to be the gentleman. Yeah, that's the gentleman. Yeah. That's the gentleman. So what this is saying here to me is like. The fish represents wealth. It represents. Um, it represents income. It represents your prosperity. It represents things going upstream. Things of value of principle. Um. I want to say it represents like a, a, a standard. The King of Diamonds is like um, a financial advisor, like a, 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 a lender, um, someone that gives a lot of advice. Um, it could even be some, it could be a doctor as well. It could be a doctor as well. Um, with this male here. In the Ace of Spades right here, as well with the King of Diamonds. Basically, what I'm getting here is like, um, there's someone here willing to help you. It seems like you need to get over whoever this individual is. Is that like, I'll help you, but you got to let go of this. Because the Ace of Spades is like, the, it's the death card. It's endings for new beginnings. And I don't think, I don't know if this is you having to let go of certain shit and step up and be the man and take care of yourself so that, you know, things can finally swim upstream. Or if you're a female Sagittarius that needs to let go of a water sign, male, okay? I have a water sign or air sign. Water sign or air sign individual. It's like you need to let it go and you need to let... You need to let it go and you need to grow. Give me guidance over here on the judgment. The five of discs, the kangaroo, the dagger, the four leaf. Give me guidance for Sagittarius. You got the call again. Like I'm trying to tell y'all, y'all gotta. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta let sleeping dogs lie. You gotta let it go. Coffin, ending. It's like. Mourn it, release it, let it go. The Nine of Diamonds is like fame, notoriety, recognition, you know? You getting that high status, you, you know, being known for something prominent. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you really want to get out of this stage of lack and just things not going your way. If you want to see the, the, the success and the, the, the greatness and the good fortune of this four-leaf clover, get over it. 
Get over it. I'm sorry. You got to get over it. Like the Ace of Spades say, get over it. And I'm about to read you the Ace of Spades so you can know that I ain't about to sit here. You know, I'm playing with you. Listen, y'all see it right there, the Ace of Spades, right? The Ace of Spades is traditionally a card of death. It's the death card, but not rarely physical death. The death of a rebirth. The death and a rebirth, an ending, a new beginning, transformation, a major life change, the skull, the mind, an important decision that brings change, worry, anxiety. We already set up here a whole bunch of worry, anxiety, look, fears, worries, a tense situation. Unsettling times. Planning is needed. You know? So, the King of Diamonds, again, it's like a financial institution, you know? That's to, to me. It says, the King of Diamonds, intelligent, dynamic, a professional man, restless, energetic. Uh, there's usually money around him. He may be a wealthy politician, an account executive, a real estate broker, a CPA, an investment banker, or a government official. He takes pride in his professional persona. If he is not careful, he could become consumed by his work and negligent to other areas of his life. He may be a relative by marriage. All right. The Nine of Diamonds. Extra money, a check of bonus, the brain, mental energy. Psychic ability, imagination, electricity, electromagnetic energy, other people's wishes and desires that affect or influence the quarant, fame, celebrity, public office, erratic red tape when surrounded by unfavorable cards. These ain't favorable cards, girl. <laughs> Do you understand? Not favorable cards, honey. Not favorable. Let's get into love and let's wrap this up, Sagittarius. So, like, seriously, if you want better things to come into your life, you have to. And I mean, seriously. And let me just tell you what the fish means real quick. The fish. The king of diamonds. The fish symbolizes good fortune, money, success, material, wealth, wages, investment, financial transactions are also covered by this card and also self-employment and entrepreneurial endeavors. All right. And what else is it saying? Oh, child, I ain't even about to get into that. I'm surely not about to get into that. And then the man is just the, the damn man. The no, I'm, I thought, bitch, I fucking thought, I fucking thought, bitch, this is not the man, this is the lady, 29 represents the lady, I knew that this was not the fucking man, I knew I was motherfucking tripping, this is a woman that is in a, a, a fucking very masculine, it's like it's a woman trying to play the male role, too, too dominant, too, I'm, and they're saying too docile, too. It's like, too not giving a fuck, too out of, it's like, emotionless. It's, it's like, operates. You know how a man operates? Like, they don't care. They're not affectionate. They're not loving. They cannot be tender. You know, like how women are very emotional, affectionate, and tender, and touching, and stuff. This person, this woman is not that. This woman is not that. This is a... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like this is some somebody needing to get over a fucking man. Or ever this is a... Child, I ain't even getting into that. Somebody need to get over something. If you need to, if you want that success, and if you want this prosperity to come to you, you got to end this shit. You know what I'm saying? Or stop acting like you're something that you're not. You're not a fucking man. Be the woman, the gentle individual that you are. Like, if you keep... It, and it's something about... It's like people don't want to deal with that. I'm serious. Like, it's like some... It's like too argumentative, too aggressive, too... Bully-like. I don't know why I'm getting that. Like, 
a woman that just like really acts like a fucking man, but it's like you're is like you're not like gay or anything like that. You just come off very uh, like ugh. Don't nobody want to deal with that shit. Give me kind of some love for Sagittarius. You got a muse. You got the muse card. So what that is basically telling me is like you need to find something else to like put your creativity in. You know, like stop putting your energy in this. Like, again, walk away and be done with it for good. When you find a new passion, that's when you find your new purpose. You understand? Look, you got a new direction, but it's in the reverse. Focus on the new direction and walk away. Find something that you want. Listen, okay. New direction. We're going to take it in the upright. Go in a new direction, girl. New direction. Okay? Stop repeating these cycles. Period. Stop going back there. Stop repeating these cycles. Period. Last guidance and love. Any last guidance and love? Okay, and I'm going to the last deck, and then we're done. Well, actually, we're not. What is this? Ascending in the reverse. So, again, find something. When you find your new passion, you find your new purpose. Stop focusing on old shit and going to the new direction. I don't want to see you stag stagnate yourself no more. Like, no one should have to physically have to go through all of this to pull you out of something because they want better for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Control your thoughts. Control your fucking emotions. No one is making you go back to those. You have to get a grip of yourself. No one. Are you seeing all of this that God is having to do? Close these cycles for good and stop getting in the way of your ascension. All right. Conclusion we have. Final conclusion we have. Thank you for Sagittarius. We up out of here. Final messages in love for Sagittarius. Thank you so much. Any last messages for Sagittarius? Alright. I could have told you that. So it's like God has been trying to give you spiritual guidance. I feel like you've been injecting it and you're not. It's like, I don't, I don't feel like you've been honoring your spiritual connection that God is trying to forge with you. Like, it's like God be sending you guidance and messages and you're not listening to it. You got to play the hand of the cards that was dealt to you. I've seen some people play some cards with some trash ass hands and end up winning all of the books. Because it's about knowing how to play your hand. You know? It's about knowing how to play your hand. You can have a hand that motherfucker sucks. But if you know the gift of the game, you always win. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's about faith. Pay attention when God be sending you messages. Because you may be missing certain things. And you might make a fateful, a, a faded mistake. Do you understand? Pay attention when God is sending you signs, baby. We got chilling confirmation. And what else we got? We got swan loyalty. That ugly duckling grew up to be a swan. Remember that. You got to be loyal to this transformation. You got to be loyal to God and understand what God is trying to do for you in your life. If you want to fight with him, guess what? He ain't going to fight with you, baby. He going to let you sit there and fight with yourself. And he going to go on and help the next. And you have to wait for him to come back around. Because the only thing that God asks for is your loyalty. 
God wants you to be as faithful and as loyal to your transformation and your betterment as you are turning back around to that bullshit that ain't going to do nothing but hurt you. Message. I'm the fuck wrong. Peace.